Hey guys, I have here a new enclosure. This is NVMe M2 SSD enclosure, Thunderbolt 3 and 4. With this type of enclosure, you will have access to the speeds advertised by the SSD. It will be close, but not the ideal speed in ideal environment. At the time of purchase of this enclosure, this was the cheapest enclosure that I could find that can provide me Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. Here's the enclosure. It is made out of aluminum. The whole body is made out of aluminum for cooling. Initially, I thought this enclosure will be big and bulky, but as you can see, it is relatively small. The size is very close to the SanDisk Extreme portable SSD it is just slightly thicker this will be considered the ideal size for me because when I travel I like to take this enclosure with me and have access to the speeds that it provides so let's start the installation of the SSD inside this new enclosure there is four screws that I need to remove first after the removal of those four screws I can have access to the inside of this enclosure and start the installation of the SSD the back plate also is made out of aluminum this is going to help with heat dissipation you Using an SSD with enclosure is going to generate a lot of heat. This might be the downside of this design because it is going to generate a lot of heat and you're going to feel it on the touch of the enclosure. This is my USB 3.1 enclosure. This one is from Sebrant. This one does not provide the same speeds as the new one that I'm installing the SSD on. The installation of the SSD is very easy. I inserted the Samsung 980 Pro at an angle of 45 degrees and I push it inside the circuit board. Here's how the SSD looks inside the new enclosure Thunderbolt 3 and 4. Inside the kit that came with the enclosure there is a thermal pad that needs to be installed on top of the SSD in order to increase the cooling aspect of the SSD. For the installation of the cooling pad you just need to apply it on the top of the SSD and remove the protecting plastic that is covering the cooling pad. After that I press the SSD down to have it flat and inserted a screw that is going to hold the SSD in place. After that I reattached the back plate and started to put the four screws that needs to go on the back of this enclosure. After the installation of all the screws the installation is almost done. The kit came with two plastic pads in order to avoid the enclosure from moving around or sliding. For the installation of the plastic parts I removed the plastic that was covering the double sided tape and after that I installed the plastic parts on both areas of the enclosure. So currently the installation of the SSD inside the enclosure is completely done. They did provide a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C cable. This is a great news because we need this cable in order to achieve the higher speeds. Once the enclosure is plugged in, there is a green light that is going to appear. This is going to be the indicator light showing that the SSD is being used. The Samsung 980 Pro inside this separate enclosure was giving me 938 megabytes per second as writing, 886 megabytes per second for reading. With my new enclosure Thunderbolt 3, I should have at least three times that number or even more. For the initial speed test, I was getting 2800 megabytes per second as writing. For the reading speed, I was getting close to 2600 megabytes per second, a little bit over 2600. I did the test multiple times in order to see if I will get something lower or something higher, but you can see it is very consistent. If you get this enclosure with the Samsung 980 Pro, you can be reassured that your setup with this SSD and enclosure is going to provide you consistent speeds and be overall reliable. So this is the USB-C that came with the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. I'm going to test that USB-C with this new enclosure and see what kind of speeds I get. By using this inferior USB-C cable, I'm getting 1800. I have lost close to 1000 megabytes per second on reading and writing. This test was simply to show that the USB-C cable is very important to achieve the higher speeds. And in order to achieve these speeds, you need to have your SSD formatted into APFS. APFS is the preferred format that is going to give you the maximum speed if you're using a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air or any other Mac OS device. One thing to know about APFS is that it works only with Mac OS and if you plug this enclosure onto a Windows PC or any other operating system, it is not going to be recognized. Earlier, I showed the speeds that I was getting with the Sebrant enclosure using the regular USB-C cable that came with it and it was close to 1000. But this time, I'm going to use the Sebrant enclosure. I have reinstalled the Samsung 980 Pro inside the Sebrant enclosure and I'm going to see what kind of speeds I'm getting with this USB-C Thunderbolt 3. Click the video on the screen for the review of the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD and for this one, the Sebrant enclosure is giving me approximately the same speeds but it is slightly higher. The writing speed increased slightly but the reading speed stayed the same. Like and subscribe and see you.